Thank you guys for coming. Last week we were not on because um, I was in San Francisco, and I do intend to talk about that. It was a really cool trip. But for the moment, I figured we'd just jump to, or we'd cut to the chase. Is that what it is? Not jumping to the chase. We're cutting to the chase. Um, and we will bring on Alpha Force Zero. Uh, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah. So Alpha Force Zero, as many of you know, is my daughter. Her real name is Kylie. And usually I... Uh, I so when I created the podcast, I scheduled it so that she would be at her grandma's house because she goes to her grandma's house on Sunday nights and uh, you know and that seems like the perfect time for me to to do the podcast so she didn't have to sit in a room and stay silent the whole time right well people have been asking me to bring her on the podcast for a while and it just so happens that there's no school tomorrow so her grandma didn't keep her tonight so uh, so yeah, I figured I'd bring her on and uh, and talk to her and kind of get her her story. So uh, yeah, uh, her name is Kylie. Her real name is Kylie. I'm sure most people know that. Uh, so how old are you, Kylie? Nine. When's your birthday? January. January what? Twenty first. January twenty first. Okay, and that's two thousand nine, right? Yep. So you're nine years old. Um, you're going to be 10 in just a couple of months. That's, that's pretty exciting. What are you hoping to get for your birthday? Anything special or, um, or, or Christmas, really either one. What are you shooting for for Christmas? What do you um, hope Santa will bring you? <laughs> Maybe like a, a flip book kit or something. Okay. Why'd you chuckle? Because. What? You, you certainly believe in Santa, right? Yeah. Okay, good. I'm just making sure. Because he's real. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, so let me just give a little bit of background uh, on on Kylie's situation. So when Kylie was uh, really young, my mom would take her to the meetings with her. And I wasn't really that worried about it because it was... Uh, you know, she's so young, she couldn't really understand what was being said anyways. Well, time goes on, and she continues to go to the meetings, and I started to realize, and it's more specifically, her mom started to realize it is a bad idea to let her continue to go to the meetings. So I had to cause a, a, a problem over it. I had to tell her, I don't want you taking her to the meetings I, or talking to her about Jehovah. I want to teach her anything about religion, so... Can you just leave religion out of it, right? Well, throughout, you know, th over the past few years, there have been times when I allowed her to go to the meeting with my mom for one reason or another. So, uh, do you, Kylie, do you remember going to any meetings or, or going in service? Can you tell me a story about when you went in service with Grandma? Um, well, I, I didn't really do much when I went in service with Grandma, I just like I kind of stood there next to her. I didn't really say anything. Okay. Did you ever knock on any doors or anything? Um, I did knock on a few doors, but I didn't say anything. <laughs> like I just said a second ago. Okay. So you you just kind of stood there and let her do her little presentation, and yeah. and just stood there and looked pretty. Yeah. Right. Got you. Okay. Interesting. Um, do you remember like? Did they play any kind of Bible games or anything when you were in the car? What happened? Like, what kind of things did they talk about or do in the car? Um, they just, like, talked about, like, sometimes when we went in service, I would be really happy because we were going to go to eat. They would be talking about where we're going to eat, not really much. Yeah. But... Yeah, I remember, um, I feel like it was... Let's see, I was probably 14 or 15 years old. I remember going out and going out in service and being all excited to go eat and all that other stuff. They had a Tim Hortons nearby. It was like a donut place and we'd go there every single uh, every single time we went in service, we'd go eat at Tim Hortons. I don't know what it was with Jehovah's Witnesses and donuts, but 
It's like <laughs> the, the happening spot for Jehovah's Witnesses. Did you ever get donuts when you went? Yeah, most of the time. We go to like um, <clears throat> Dunkin' Donuts. Really? Most of the time. Yeah. What is this? What is it with Jehovah's Witnesses <laughs> and donuts? I don't understand. What is happening here? That's so That's funny. That's why. That is why I would be really excited to go. Yeah, I do. I get donuts. Yeah, there's like a ritual behind it almost. Like, you know, you, you show up at the Kingdom Hall and you go through the little service meeting and then you go knock on the doors. And then a few hours later, you go get donuts or you go get food or something. <laughs> yeah. And, and it is, uh, I don't know. There's an enjoyable aspect to, I guess, hanging out with, friends or, or people in a car and talking to them and then going and getting food like there is an enjoyable aspect to that I guess right yeah but yeah that that's that's pretty interesting I know when I was I think I talked about this on my main channel but when I was um when I went in service with some Jehovah's Witnesses from this area uh I remember them playing these Bible games where it was like they would they would somebody would think of a Bible character and we would have to ask questions about that Bible character to figure out who it was. I don't know if you did any of that. Did you ever play any of that stuff? No, we never even played games. Interesting. So what did you do? Was it just like getting in the car and then just going door to door? Is it pretty serious or Yeah. It's that's pretty interesting. Um, you had some friends up there too, right? Like some Jehovah's Witness friends. If you do, don't say their last names. Uh, I don't even know the last name, so. Okay, good. Yeah, but you had some Jehovah's Witness friends up there, didn't you? Yeah. Like Nora or something like that, I think. Yeah, Nora. Yeah. And, and Kyrie. Right. That's pretty interesting. Not Kylie. Not Kylie, Kylie but Kyrie with an R, right? Yeah. Well, that's pretty cool. So yeah, um, yeah. My uh, mom she lied a lot and told me she wasn't gonna talk about Jehovah and all that other good junk when she was talking about Jehovah with Kylie, and yeah. she called it theocratic warfare. I mean that that is what it's called, where they lie and cheat and manipulate and steal and do whatever it takes to further the goals of the Watchtower Society. Um, as long as it's in service to the Watchtower Society, then it's okay. They're okay to lie. And that, that is how my mom justified lying to me, telling me she was not going to talk to Kylie here about Jehovah's Witnesses, but did anyways. So uh, I'm just like, a while back, I remember, Kylie, you said you wanted to get baptized as Jehovah's Witness. This has been probably, I think you were seven, so a couple of yeah. years now, right? How do you feel about mm -hmm. that now? I, I don't know. Mm. I don't know why I wanted to. Yeah, well, I remember, <clears throat> I remember at the time you I said. I think I, well, yeah, ahead. I know what I said. I think I know. I, I think you said that you just wanted to, like, get baptized. You just wanted to be in the water and, and get baptized just to go through the process or whatever. But, I'm pretty sure this is what I, this is what I said. Um, I want to get baptized because I want to get dunked into a big pool at the meetings. Right, right. Um, and then I told you that you could do that, but you could just, you'd have to do it at Mama's church instead of, the Kingdom Hall, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, of course, I find it interesting that Jehovah's Witnesses commonly want children to get baptized earlier and earlier, younger and younger. Like, they're pushing for seven, eight, nine years old to get baptized. I was, I think, 13 or, or 14 maybe, but I was the first in my congregation, or one of the first. But I feel like if you're not old enough to get married, you're not old enough to get baptized. Like, yeah. this, this decision is going to affect you for the rest of your life, right? Yeah. It seems to me that somebody that's seven years old could not possibly understand the consequences behind what they're doing. 
um, you know, with, with, as, yeah. as far as ha- if you had gotten baptized, you would have had to have stopped talking to me, for example. Yeah, just ignored you completely. Our relationship definitely would have changed. Of course, you lived with me, so you wouldn't completely be able to ignore me or anything, but our relationship would change permanently, probably. Yeah. And I don't know. It, it, it's just like, it's like grandma's goal was just to get you baptized and, and forget any of the consequences that come along with it. Just get you baptized and, and her job is done kind of thing, you know, and that kind of bothered me a little bit, yeah. but Anyways, I don't know. I mean, she's a good person in her heart, really. I really believe that Grandma is a good person in her heart. She has people's best intentions at heart. I just think that she has a warped idea of what's best for people. She thinks that Jehovah's Witnesses are the best option for everybody. If people just join the religion, their lives will be fantastic. Um. So, yeah, I mean, I, like I was saying, I think that she she has everyone's best intentions at heart. She is a good person. She just has a warped view of what's best, you know? Mm-hmm. But anyway, I am so glad that you don't have this desire to get baptized anymore because that seriously worried me for a while. I was quite concerned. <laughs> but... uh mm-hmm. Anyways, yeah. Was there anything that you wanted to say to, like, fans or anything that you wanted to talk about or anything before I move on to another subject? Um, we do have some questions for her. Oh, really? Okay. Do you want to answer some questions, Kylie? Sure. Okay, let's have them. All right. Um, first one was, uh, how old were you when you stopped going to meetings? Uh, she may not. I have... She may not remember. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, she was, I remember she was about three when I, I drew a hard line. And she she was going to every meeting up until about three years old. But then she kind of sporadically yeah. went to one here or there from then on. Yeah, but you still go when you're with Grandma, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because, like, yeah. She, I go with Grandma. I don't see where to go. I where to go while she's at the meeting so right so if she does end up going to grandma's for the summer which hasn't happened the past couple of summers she has no option but to go to the meetings because you know that's where my mom's going my mom is watching her what you gonna do so anyway next question all right you're gonna like this one babe what do you think about lunchables Mm. (laughs) um i love them (laughs) She's a big Lunchable them. fan. But I've kind of yeah. cut down on how much I buy them. Like, I, usually I'll just buy, like, yeah. sandwich Why stuff. don't you tell them favorite Lunchable? Nachos. She likes pizza Nachos. pretty well, too. Nachos and pizza. Yeah, that was, that was my most common one. <laughs> but now I mostly eat nachos. All right, now we have the obligatory child question. What do you want to be when you grow up? Um, scientist. That's a good choice. Yeah, good answer. <laughs> yeah. What kind of scientist? Any specific or just want to be a scientist? Uh, just scientist. Okay. I know a lot of people uh, aspire to different things. Like, a lot of people will aspire to be politicians or you know, actors or or something like that. But I feel like scientist is an underrated occupation. Of course, you you know, you're going to want to get more specific than just scientists. Like you could be a chemist Mm -hmm. or a geologist or or something. Yeah, but um, I think chemist people do underestimate the value. You know, I I know that Mm -hmm. my plans for you are um, I'm hoping that you're going to get a doctorate degree at a university, eight years. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're in fourth grade right now. Yeah. So that means you have um, eight years of grade school remaining and then eight years of college. So that's 16 years to go, plus 
four years of interning if you wanted to be a doctor or something. So, mm-hmm. uh, anyways, yeah. I don't know. It's just like it's. I think it's an undervalued occupation generally as scientists. I don't know why more people like. I don't know why more more politicians aren't scientists. Why do we have lawyers? universally renowned for being lying, cheating scumbags. You know, I mean, not all lawyers are like that, obviously. There are some really good people who are lawyers, but the the stigma, the stereotype of lawyer is scumbag. And all of our politicians are lawyers. Why don't we have any scientists for politicians? It kills me. Like, they're not thinking critically here. Anyways, uh, yeah, that was my little rant. But yeah, I appreciate you coming on and talking to me, Kylie. I I should get you on again one of these days. Um, Was there anything else that you wanted to say or anything before you mute and I move on? Um, Actually, yeah. So um, remember when we were talking about Grandma? Yeah. So one of the times she brought me to a meeting, she had to actually go up on stage and talk. Oh, yeah, she had a presentation? Yeah, and we were sitting pretty far in the back next to my friend Mm. she just left me sitting there so i could have walked away oh really yeah see yeah that's the thing is grandma has like this inherent trust for anybody who is jehovah's witness um you wouldn't do that if you were at like a bus station or something you know you wouldn't just leave a kid sitting there uh i think generally jehovah's witnesses have such a kinship with each other that it's probably safe. I mean, I don't think anybody would walk off with a kid. I I don't know how old you were. You're probably six or seven or something. Yeah, probably. I don't think anybody would walk off with you. But the fact that, you know, that just goes to show what kind of an inherent trust Jehovah's Witnesses have for each other. It's really fascinating to see like this, this, this weird kinship that they have with each other. But Anyways, yeah, that, that's pretty interesting stuff. I appreciate you coming on and talking to me, and I hope uh, I hope you guys enjoyed listening to her, and like I said, maybe I'll get her on another one of these days, but go ahead and mute, and I'm going to move on to another subject, okay? Yeah. Okay. This last Sunday, I went to um, San Francisco. It was pretty fun, actually. I had a really, really good time. Got to hang out with a genetically modified skeptic, and uh, and Holy Kool-Aid and some other pretty cool people. It was really fun. We, we spent a lot of our time in my hotel room playing Super Smash Brothers for the, um, for the Nintendo 64. Of course, I had when I, so I bought this copy of Super Smash Brothers, and I was putting it so i have these like these game cartridge holders right they're these 3d printed cartridge holders cartridge stands and so i put the game in and they fit perfectly well i i go to put smash brothers in and it's like too big for the stand it's like what's going on here this is weird it's perfectly sized for a nintendo 64 cartridge and so, I, you know, I kind of look around at the game a little bit. I'm like, what, what is this? And I look at the back because there's a sticker. Or it's not a sticker. It's a, uh, it's a stamp. There's a stamp with a number on every single Nintendo game. And on the Nintendo 64 games, it's on the back. So I shine it in the light to kind of check the stamp. It's imprinted in it. And there's no stamp. On this game, there's a stamp on every single other Nintendo 64 game I own. Just not a stamp on this one. So I'm like, what is happening? Well, it turns out the labels looked way too new. Um, The game was just absolutely pristine. And at that point, I kind of realized that it was a reproduction cartridge that I got my hands on. So I end up getting my screwdriver set and opening the cartridge... And I see on the cartridge, all over the place, there is silk screen, the word Korea, all over. That that was my clue. It's it's fake. It was reproduced in Korea. A real one would say Nintendo on it. And it was even missing this little chip that Nintendo puts on. Um, 
So usually most games, most Nintendo 64 games have four chips on them. Well, this one only had three. That fourth chip is a Nintendo specific one that that's kind of like a copyright thing. So anyways, uh, it turns out the save battery on that was also just completely missing. Save battery was gone. So I couldn't save any games. Um, but yeah, I ended up getting my money refunded and getting an, a real copy, but I wanted to keep this this um, reproduction because it's kind of a part of history. I mean, this thing is just absolutely flawless. It seriously fooled me at first glance. That's how good it was. But anyway, so I bring this reproduction to San Francisco with me. And Holy Kool-Aid and Genetically Modified Skeptic, we all sat around in my room playing uh, Smash Brothers. And it was just a really, really good time. They were playing it so much. They played it so much that they unlocked. We unlocked the item menu. That means we have to play a hundred versus games to unlock the item menu, and we unlocked like uh, a bunch of different secret characters and everything, all while leaving the game running because we couldn't save it. We kept the Nintendo 64 running this whole time because we couldn't save the game. It was awesome. It was a really, really good time. Uh, but yeah, as far as the conference itself goes. Uh, it was a good conference. So a lot of you guys know that I don't really like to take a position on the whole SJW thing, right? I was watching uh, MythCon recently, and I heard them saying on stage, I don't know who it was, it was just a, a bunch of people from the old atheist community. They said, the question was, has the atheist community completely died? Does it even exist anymore? Because they all moved to politics. And that kind of made me laugh a little bit. Because it's like, yeah, they all moved to politics. And we came in and filled that vacuum. Me, genetically modified skeptic, and holy Kool-Aid, and Apologia, and godless cranium, and all of them. All of them. Uh, cosmic skeptic, even. We've all come in and filled that, that vacuum, that gap that's missing because they moved to politics and SJW issues and all that good stuff. Personally, I don't take a position on SJW stuff generally. I don't, I don't talk about, I'm not an anti-SJW, I'm not an SJW. I felt like there weren't enough people talking about atheism anymore. And that is why I started YouTube. So, in fact, that's why a lot of us started YouTube a few years ago, back in 2016, 2017, because there was just nobody else doing it. They all felt like they were burned out, like all the arguments had been argued already. But you know what? There is always somebody out there, somebody walking out of religion, walking out of their church for the first time and saying to themselves, you know what? I don't think I believe this. I think this is complete garbage. There's always a Jehovah's Witness sitting in their house erasing their browser history because they don't want their wife to find out they were on ex Jehovah's Witness forums. They don't want their their parents to find out they've been watching Telltale videos or John Cedar's videos or something like that. There there will always be somebody out there doing that. And whether those arguments have been argued a billion times or not, somebody needs to be here talking about this for those people. I don't care if people feel like I'm repeating myself. I I won't stop until there, you know, there's no air in my lungs anymore. Because there will always be a need for this. So anyways, I just thought it was funny that, you know, these people are are, are saying the atheist community is dead. Complete lack of self awareness. Not realizing that that's, you know, a group has risen from the ashes to replace them. Anyways, yeah, so Freedom From Religion Foundation. I want to get back to this. So FFRF, it was a really good trip. And here's the thing. Yeah, so I was saying that there's, you know, I don't take a stand on the SJW issue. But I do recognize that Islam is something that needs to be addressed. We need to talk about Islam. We need to talk about 
the fact that people are being killed right now because they don't believe it anymore. Need to talk about the fact that there's a guy in prison sentenced for 10 years, a thousand lashes, Raif Badawi. Uh, and, and I think he's six or seven years into his sentence right now. And he, he doesn't even realize people know his name. His wife showed up to FFRF to give a speech there uh, and to accept an award in his place because he's been in prison for six or seven years. And his kid, he hasn't seen his wife or his kid in six or seven years. It is so important that we talk about this. I mean, SJW issues aside, I, I think it's way overblown. I think the vast majority of people know that Islam is a problem and it needs to be addressed. It's a very small minority of people who say Islamophobia is a problem. We shouldn't criticize Islam, blah, blah, blah. The people are out there. They are. And, and they're wrong. We need to address it. Now, that's as, as far uh, into the SJW debate as I want to get. But FFRF definitely addressed Islam the right way. They didn't hide from it. They didn't shy away. They, they put multiple ex-Muslim speakers on stage, Sarah Hyder and a bunch of others, and they did a really fantastic job. I, I, I really deeply believe in what FFRF is doing. In fact, I'm hoping to make a video about FFRF soon, talking about uh, what they do and why we should support them. I mean, I went there not knowing anything about FFRF, Freedom From Religion Foundation. I mean, almost nothing. And I walked out of there prepared to donate my own time and money, whatever it takes to further their goals. Because these guys are the people you call when a teacher is forcing her students to pray with her in the mornings. These are the people you call when some politician uses government money to put a cross in a public park or something. I mean, these are people fighting for us. These are people who are doing something that I don't know of any other organization doing. And I, am, for one, am, am honestly really glad to know that this organization exists. Really, really glad to know it exists.